Hi everybody, my name is Danielle Nicole and welcome to Monetary Makeup. If you have a similar undertone like me, a fair to light cool undertone that is, you are probably constantly on the search for glowy bronzy products and SPFs that don't make you look orange. So in case you didn't know, Winnie Harlow recently came out with a new skincare line, which I have here one of her SPFs and an SPF lip balm. So this is called the Isle Glow Face Lotion SPF 45, and then this is her Sun Care Isle Lip Balm SPF 30. But it does no good if we have a bronze glowy base, but the rest of our body is pure white, right? And Kapari came out with a Body Glow SPF that is in a gel water resistant formula. So these are the three products I'll be testing out today, and I will be testing out this SPF under makeup just to see if it pills or does anything strange. And while I test out these new SPS on my fair to light cool undertone, the topic of the day is going to be a couple of tips or products that you can use to help keep your Fude brushes in check. And most of those products are affordable, which will hopefully help you save money in the long run on your Fude brushes. So if you're excited to get started and enjoy the video while you're watching, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and let's get started right now. Before we get into the deets about these products, I do just want to mention I did purchase all these products myself and I do know that K-Skin is actually Winnie Harlow's line, which I believe she is a model. I personally just don't know much about her, so this is just going to be a generic first impression honest review. Now lip balm with SPF on the lips is actually an area that I rarely ever forget to apply. Definitely don't want my lips to burn in addition to my face. But one of the issues I have with many lip balms that contain SPF is that they taste disgusting. So this is called the K-Skin Isle Glow Lip Balm SPF 30. So let's apply this to the lips and let's see if it does in fact have that SPF flavor to it or not. So it is a clear formula and this is really interesting. So this tip right here that you use for the applicator it actually feels like rubber, so that's definitely something new. So this is what the texture looks like, just kind of a traditional clear balm. Ooh, this is a little bit thicker than I anticipated. All right, so I know it's just a lip balm, but I do want to give you a thorough review. So first of all, I really do like this applicator. It actually has a nice indent right there, so it makes it very easy to apply, and it does smell very good almost like a minty coconut scent. I guess that's what I would describe it as. Unfortunately though, it does have that nasty SPF flavor. Now the flavor isn't terrible. If any of you have ever tried the Sun Balm lip balms, those are super strong. This isn't quite as strong and it does have a nice pleasant scent to it, but doesn't taste the best. However, this formula feels very hydrating on the lips. It almost feels more like a lip mask than a traditional lip balm. So I really do like the texture of this. Next, let's move on to the Isle Glow Moisturizer and let me read to you a couple of deets about this product. So this is in a traditional plastic tube. However, I do appreciate that the packaging is not clear to help protect the SPF in there. K-Skin Isle Glow SPF Lotion Broad Spectrum SPF 45. You do get 45 milliliters or 1.5 fluid ounces and I will put the price up on the screen. So this is a pearlescent, lightweight, and antioxidant-packed face sunscreen with UVA and UVB protection that illuminates all skin tones for an instant island glow for daily use with or without makeup. Our products are formulated with a custom blend of hydrating, gentle, and island-based ingredients mixed with the most effective skincare grade actives to keep your skin protected and looking healthy and glowing. K-Skin works on all skin tones, all occasions, all year round. Specifically formulated with sea moss, which is a nutrient-rich seaweed that hydrates and helps strengthen and protect the skin's moisture barrier. Hydrating Nectar, a tropical plant-based nectar that replenishes moisture levels for immediate and lasting hydration. Niacinamide and vitamin B3, a skin-loving vitamin that revitalizes tones and smooths the skin. And Penthanol or vitamin B, a soothing vitamin that protects and nourishes the skin. This does claim to be clean sunscreen actives, reef safe, dermatologist tested, non-comedogenic, no synthetic fragrance, vegan, cruelty free, sulfate,
paraben, and silicone free and does not contain oxybenzone or octinoxate. All right, I am really excited to test this out. I've actually been looking for a sunscreen that has a little bit more of a bronze glow. Now, I of course don't have a tan right now, but when I do have a tan, I do prefer to have a little bit of a bronze luminosity. So I'm going to work in small sections and add as I need it just to get started. So this is what the product looks like on the finger. So let me first do a little swatch on the back of my hand here. Yeah, so it does have a nice bronze sheen to it. Definitely see that pearlescent iridescence. However, I'm really excited because it doesn't appear to be super deep and I don't think it's going to be too light for those that have medium to deeper complexions. So let's find out. All right, so I'm just going to squirt a little bit out on the back of my hand here. And I personally like to work in sections. So I'm just going to apply this to the top portion of the skin first. And I always make sure I get the lids. That way I can test out if it burns the eye area or not. I'm not really picking up any sort of scent to this either. So I just picked up a little bit more. So let's rub this in the rest of the skin. It does feel very hydrating. However, it doesn't have that greasy texture that a lot of sunscreens do, so that's good. All right, let me give this just a couple of minutes to sink into the skin, and then I will show you up close what this is looking like. All right, so I just wanted to bring you guys in a little bit closer here and show you what is happening. So as you could probably see, I didn't really take my time applying this. I just kind of slapped it on like I usually do with SPF. And I just took a look at my skin and I'm gonna come in really close, but you're going to notice that, first of all, the bronze iridescence, it is a little bit too deep for my skin tone, but that's okay because we're going to be going in with makeup anyway. However, it is pulling really bad on my eyebrows. My eyes are definitely burning. And overall, it just looks like I did not blend it in very well. So let me bring you in close so you can see. So I'm not sure if the camera is going to be able to pick this up or not, but take a look at my eyebrows. Can you guys see like that right there? And I keep trying to rub it in, but it's not doing that. And then my nose, can you see how it's pilling right there? So what I'm going to do is actually wipe this off and then reapply it a little bit more carefully. And I'll be right back just to see if there's any difference. All right, so we're back. And as you can see, I don't have any sunscreen on. I wanted to show you guys what I'm about to do in my thought process. So usually when I apply sunscreen, I apply a generous amount of product to make sure my skin is protected, of course, which is what I just did a second ago. Just kind of slathered it on, rubbed it in really quick and called it good. I think this product is going to be a little bit finicky, at least it was for me. So what I'm thinking is this product for me anyway, is probably not going to be able to be used as my only SPF because when I applied that much product, it just started pilling really bad. So I'm thinking it's going to be more of like a sunscreen topper, if that makes sense. So just add a little bit to the high points of the face. But first, I just wanna try this one more time and I wanna apply it in small sections and less of an amount at a time just to see if that will affect the outcome or not. So instead of taking a full amount like I did a second ago, I'm just going to grab a tiny bit of product at a time and really try to work it into my skin just to see if I can get it to work. You know, some products work better with different application methods. So let's see if I can get it to work this way. Now this was also burning my eyes. So, you know, some SPFs just do that and you can't apply them to the eye area. So I'm gonna be a little bit more careful this time and not go ham with the, the eye application. So this time I just have the tiniest little amount and I just wanna see if I can apply it to the eye area just a little bit more sparingly. I'm trying to be careful I don't actually get it in my eyes. All right, so I brought you guys in up close. So I just have my mirror right here and I'm just taking a look at the skin. So it's still peeling a little bit. 
if you can tell. However, overall, I do feel like this application looks much better than it did on the first go around. And it definitely doesn't look as deep by going in with a light application. So this is what my skin is looking like with round two. You know, it does have a very beautiful bronze luminous finish, which as I mentioned was exactly what I was looking for in a sunscreen. So overall, this is what we are looking like so far. All right, so as of right now, I would definitely be comfortable wearing this on its own, especially to the beach. I think the luminosity this sunscreen provides is beautiful. However, unfortunately, because I wasn't able to apply the necessary amount to have full SPF protection, I, of course, then wouldn't be protected. So I'm thinking, like I mentioned earlier, this is probably going to be best as an SPF topper, but that's just my initial thought. So next, let's move on to foundation. All right, next, I'm going to go in with a foundation that I'm very familiar with. So this is the Wet n Wild Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator. I use the shade Porcelain. This is one of my holy grail foundations or tinted hydrator, tinted moisturizer. However, I do find this product, you really can build up to a medium finish. So this is what I'm going to use today. And let's start off with a damp beauty sponge and I might use a brush too. And I do find that this Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator I would say it leans more on the satin finish. It's not dewy and it's definitely not fully matte. It's kind of just that natural finish. So this should be a good one to test over. I'm telling you what, you guys, I just can't see a situation where this tinted hydrator is not in my collection. It's $5, but you would never know it. It performs like a high-end foundation. It's just beautiful. All right, so I just finished blending the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator out and went on very quick and easy. So I'm pretty shocked. I was expecting it to pull really bad since that was my first experience with the K sunscreen. However, I think applying the light application is why it's performing so well right now. So I think my skin looks really nice, you guys. That K sunscreen has such a nice natural bronzy glow and i'm so excited that it does not feel greasy it definitely sunk into the skin and it definitely dried down so i think this is going to be an oily skin friendly sunscreen in that capacity all right i'm going to finish up the rest of my makeup in just a second here but next i want to talk about this new kapari body glow spf so this is called the kapari sun shield body glow Broad Spectrum SPF 50, UVA and UVB protection, 40 minute sweat and water resistant. It also says it is PABA free or PABA free. I'm not quite sure what that means, maybe paraben free. And on the back of the packaging, it reads with coconut, hibiscus, cuckoo nut oils, this lightweight sheer body gel is a sweat and water resistant sunscreen packed with moisturizing oils and nourishing vitamins. Ethically sourced natural pearlescent minerals will give you that perfect shimmer while innovative sunscreen ingredients shield you from the sun. Never greasy, always glowy. Directions say pump a generous amount of product onto your palm to apply. Apply one thin layer, let it absorb, and then apply another layer, especially if you're using while swimming. This comes in five fluid ounces or 150 mils, and I will put the price up on the screen. So the first thing I have to mention about this product is this just smells absolutely divine. If you like tropical or pineapple scents, this smells delicious. It honestly makes me want to eat it. Now I do notice the scent of this does dissipate after application. However, I did wear this the other day and I put it on my forearm right here. And even after I wash my arm, I could still smell just a hint of scent to it. So I actually quite like the scent. So of course I'm happy that the scent lasts. Now I actually wanted to test this out on my face, even though it does say it's a body gel. However, it does have quite a few oils in it. And because my skin is acne prone, I don't think that would be a great idea. But if you guys do want to see me use this underneath makeup or just apply it on its own, let me know. 
Now, as much as I would love to put on a bathing suit and show you guys what this looks like all over and in the sunlight, I would love to do that. However, it is still, even though it's spring in Michigan, it's still basically winter outside. So I unfortunately am not going to be able to do that. We actually have zero sunshine today, but I am going to apply this to my arm. That way you can see the glow this provides. Now, as far as the texture of this, it is a gel-like formula, which you guys know I love my gel formulas. They just do such an amazing job on oily, dehydrated skin. So even though this product does have oils in them, it does not feel super greasy. It has a little bit of a hydrating SPF feeling to it, but definitely not super greasy. So hopefully you can see the product dripping down. And it does have a very luminous glow but I don't think there's any glitter or anything like that in it. This just provides such a beautiful sheen. Now, once this product dries down, because right now it's still pretty wet, you will still be left with this sheen. So once it dries down, I've also noticed that it does not transfer on my clothing. The only thing is it's still a little bit hydrating. So I wouldn't wear your best clothes underneath this just because you might get a little bit of that moisturizing effect on the clothing, but it's nice because it's not like a self tanner that will transfer on your clothing. But just look at this glow. Can you imagine this on your shoulders and chest at the beach? This would be beautiful and provide SPF protection at the same time. All right, so I just gave the Kapari body gel a few minutes to sink into the skin. So I just wanted to show you See how it doesn't really have that super kind of wet look anymore. However, there is definitely still that natural glowy sheen. So overall, this is just a beautiful product. All right, so typically I finish up the rest of my makeup and then I move into the topic of the day. But for today's video, we are going to do the topic of the day first. So if you are a lover of brushes, in particular Fude brushes or natural hair brushes, then this topic of the day is definitely going to be for you. So I think we all know by now that Fude brushes can be quite expensive. They are certainly the investment. However, what I find is as long as you take care of these brushes, they can last you years and years. So I have a couple of products that I wanted to mention today that are actually affordable or at least not high end or luxury prices that I wanted to share with you. So the first product I actually wanted to bring up Sigma. So Sigma has a brush rack. However, I believe it is around $100. Now granted you do fit, I wanna say 90 to 100 brushes in that brush rack. However, not everyone wants or is able to purchase a $100 brush rack. But why I bring up the brush rack is that when you lay your brushes on the side to dry, sometimes the extra water residue can actually get into the ferrule of the brushes and unfortunately ruin your brushes. So this I actually purchased from Target and this brush rack is by Sanya Kashuk, not Sanya G, but Sanya Kashuk. And this is a really nice brush rack, you guys. It was under $20. I will put the price up here for you guys. Now it doesn't hold 94 brushes, it holds 14 brushes. However, I do find that this does last me at least a couple of days in between my brush uses. So this is a fantastic product I wanted to mention and it's really easy to use. All right, the next product I wanna talk about is an extremely useful item to have if you are someone who does not want to wash your brushes in between using different pigments, which they of course don't recommend. In fact, the typical recommendation for fully washing your food aid brushes is once a month. Now, I don't know about you, but I use my brushes repeatedly every single day. So what I'm holding up here is what's called the Sigma Switch. So this is a silicone pad. Once again, it was very affordable. I believe it was under $20. And what you'll notice is there are actually different patterns that are laid out on this silicone pad. And what's great about this is not only can you use this when you are using powders, but you can also use this to clean off your brushes with creams or liquids. So I use this all the time when I'm filming. It doesn't matter if it's a cream, liquid powder. If I want to reuse a brush, all you do is simply 
rub the brush around like so in the correct spot and you might notice there may still be a little bit of a stain left however it does remove all the pigmentation or at least most of the pigmentation so this thing has been a lifesaver for my food aid brushes now the next product i want to talk about is a microfiber towel now this is a sanya g towel that i ordered off of beautylish it has a nice beautiful design on this side and then the microfiber towel fibers on this side now don't get me wrong this is a beautiful towel and i appreciate sanya g more than so many people when it comes to brushes however this towel can be a little bit pricey so I was recently at Ulta the other day and they now carry the makeup eraser towels. So if you are looking for an alternative for microfiber towels that quickly erase the makeup both on your face and for your brushes, these are amazing. All right, the final product I'm going to talk about is actually a solid brush and sponge cleaner from e.l.f. Now, <laughs> You guys, I just can't be bothered to go get up. It's in my bathroom right now, but I will put a picture of it up here. So this is just a solid brush cleaner. Now what you'll notice is the pigment of this soap almost looks like a charcoal or a black color. So what's nice is while you're cleaning your brushes in that soap, it completely removes any stains I have ever had on my brushes. So you can actually see where the soap is hitting the brushes and you can see the pigments being removed as you are washing them. So the point is I don't have to sit there and scrub and scrub and scrub. I literally just dip the brush in the soap with a tiny bit of water and it removes the pigment or the makeup almost immediately. So those are a couple of affordable options that I have found extremely helpful, especially with my Fude brushes in between washes. So I hope you found them helpful as well. As always, I will have all the products I discussed today linked down below. All right, I will see you guys at the end of the night for my final thoughts and a wear test. Hi everybody. So as you can see, I just decided to not add any additional makeup today. You know, sometimes I just don't feel like doing a full face of makeup, so just did the base products today. So it has only been a couple hours later, I'd say about three hours later, but I think I've come to my final thoughts about these products now, so I don't think it's necessary to do a full 10 or 12 hour wear test. So one of the things I cannot stand about any SPF, it doesn't matter if it's for the face, body, anywhere on the body at all, I cannot stand super greasy, heavy SPFs. I just can't handle it. So this Kapari Body Gel SPF 50, this is getting two thumbs up from me. All right, so this K-Skin Lip Balm, I do quite like this. The only other SPF lip balms I've ever used are from Sunbum, and the flavor of those is so strong with SPF. Anytime I apply those, it just immediately makes me gag. So even though this does have a slight SPF flavor, it's definitely minute, so it's something that I can definitely get away with, and it doesn't bother me a ton. All right, now let's talk about the K-Skin Isle Glow Moisturizer SPF. So as far as the pros go, I really enjoy the texture and the finish of this SPF. I know I keep mentioning I don't like super greasy moisturizers or SPFs, but when I do apply this to the skin, it does feel hydrating, but not in a greasy way, and it dries down. So as I mentioned earlier, I think folks with oily skin are definitely going to enjoy this. And I'm also a fan of the ingredients in this SPF, especially since it has niacinamide. As someone who also has acne prone skin, niacinamide and me just really get along. I love it in all of my base products. Well, not all of them, but in many of my base products. So I really enjoy the formulation of this SPF. Now, the one thing I do wanna mention about the ingredients in this K-Skin Isle Glow is that it does have fruit extracts in it. So I do recommend taking a look at the ingredients list before you purchase this yourself 
especially if you have sensitive skin, some of those fruit extracts or oils can really exacerbate redness or irritate the skin. Now, it did not irritate my skin at all the couple times I have worn this, but I did just want to mention it just in case. All right, well, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the topic of the day as well as the review and wear test. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Just want to thank you guys so much for spending your time with me, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye, guys.